So as you can see, there's some pretty cool new lighting going on in here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we're gonna be talking about five ways that you can better light your subject in videos. Let's talk about it. All right, so the first way to light your subject, a plain old key light from a 45 degree angle. You wanna shoot it from a 45 degree angle so it kinda hits the side diagonal of the face and leaves some shadows. Uh, you could also do the opposite side, boom, and then leaves the shadows on this side, but you always wanna go at like a 45 degree angle, man. Straight on is not really the, nah, you don't really wanna shoot straight on. You want some shadows, some depth somewhere, either left Left, right, whatever, whichever side you want to go with, go 45 degree angle, man. That's how I like these types of videos, my YouTube videos, or even if you're doing somebody talking, interview, you want to have some shadows and depth on somebody's face, use 45 degree lighting. So number two is key light and a backlight. And a backlight, I mean a rim light or a kicker light, whichever one you want to call it. So a key light is obviously your main light. It lights your subject. Kind of like this light right here. I use a 120D Mark II for all my key lighting almost all the time. I may use a Quasar Science here and there, maybe, I don't know but majority of the time I use a 120D Mark II and before I had the Mark II I had the Mark I. That light is also amazing. It's a great key light, very soft. You have to have the dome on it if you're trying to key light. I like to key light with a soft light with a dome. So you got the mini dome and you have the big dome. Those are both dope. It just depends on what you're trying to do. The mini dome with the grid on it kind of gives you a more direct soft light. The bigger dome kind of lights up more of an area, you know, so either way your subject will be soft lit. That's perfect. And your backlight, your rim light, your kicker light, whatever you want to call it, that can be like a spotlight. You want to shoot that the opposite of your key light. So majority of the time I key light from a 45 degree angle around 11 or 10 o'clock right onto the side of the face so it leaves some shadows. You can do it from the opposite side if you want. Leave some shadows on this side. Either side works. As long as you're coming from a 45 degree angle you don't want to shoot straight on. It's not really that pleasing. You want to have a little depth, some shadows. You know it looks really good like that. It's kind of hot in here man. Sheesh. Alright so my hair is crazy so whatever. Lighting setup number three. You want to shoot from a 90 degree angle straight onto the side. So you would shoot the light directly at your subject's face and it gives you a dark, deep, dramatic shadows on the other side of the face. This lighting setup is really good for like music videos just because it gives like that drama, that depth. It just looks really good. You could do it from either side, right or left. It doesn't really matter. This is another great way to light your subject. Moving on, lighting setup number four, overhead lighting. So you can achieve this lighting setup by using a C stand. Typically a regular light stand won't work because you'll catch it in the scene. So when you're using a C stand, you can actually set that out of scene and put an arm on it, push that arm out over top of the subject's head, put the light on it, shoot it straight down, and boom, now you have an overhead light, which gives you a really dramatic shadows under the eyes, weird like dark background lit right over the head, really eerie, dramatic, typically used for like interrogation scenes if somebody's being interrogated or being questioned about something, you know, up that alley. But that is another sick lighting setup that you can use. And last but not least, lighting setup number five, a silhouette. So how I did this is I put a light directly behind my subject. My subject was YC. The light was directly behind him. I turned him to the side because with a silhouette, if you're looking straight on and there's a light behind you and there's no light on your face, you won't be able to see the lips and it just it's just not right. So you have to turn your subject to the side. You have to get a profile shot of them so you can see their lips if they're maybe doing lyrics to a song or I don't know if you're just trying to capture their face, whatever the case may be. In this scenario, we're talking about videos and in fact, we're talking about music videos. So you would turn your subject to the side so when they're saying their lyrics, you can see their mouth actually moving. The light looks good. The face is darked out. Looks really dramatic, really cool. We actually took some haze in a can and we sprayed it in the air just to make the light and look a little bit more cool with the silhouette shot. And also like the location that you're at, depending on where you're at, you could flip the whole silhouette around and shoot the opposite way. And that light will shine onto the face and it'll make a shadow on like a wall or anywhere, any type of like textured background. You could do this depending on where you're at and it could look really cool. Just, I don't know, we were just playing around and I kind of like saw that and I was like, that looks dope right there, that shadow of the head. So that's even another way that you can light your subject. So a lot of people kind of struggle with how to light their subject sometimes, and especially on crunch time when you're about to shoot a video, you know, you're shooting the next day and you're kind of getting all worried and clammy. You're like, oh God, which uh, which one are we gonna use? Which light, how should I light this? I don't know how to light this. What light should I use? Oh my God. You can literally use any light, man. Typically, if you're key lighting something, you want the light to be kind of soft. If you're shooting beams and you're trying to do kickers and stuff like that, you kind of want that lighting source to be hard and like direct. You don't want it to be wide open. And if you're trying to light like a background or something, you can use big wide floodlights. Light it up, man. Light the background up, light a car up, light a house up, whatever the case may be. You could use Ari's big light. You could use floodlights. It doesn't matter. You get the job done, man. Just understanding how to light this scenario is really the most important part. So those are five lighting setups. Very simple, very basic, very clean. If you're ever in a jam and you're trying to figure out how to light your subject, come to this video, man. Check it out and make sure that you light your subject right. Just your scene.
scene, your set in general, light it up, man, make it look good. I hope that you guys like the new lighting going on in here, man. I got some cool new stuff going on. Shout out to my people at LifeX, 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 whatever, however you say it. So for instance, on this whole lighting setup right here, I have a key light, 45 degree angle, 120D Mark II at uh, what, maybe a 65% on the um, lighting, maybe, yeah. It's kind of bright, huh? It's kind of intense. And then on the back lighting, we got some strip lights on the desk, and then we got the Peace Neon sign, really dope. And on this side, we got the LifeX beam, really dope. So we kind of got it balanced all out, really colorful, really cool looking, man. I just, me personally, I love lighting. I love colorful lights, I love neons, I love LEDs. It's just my favorite, man. So if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out in some way, some fashion, man, slap that like button. I would really, really appreciate it. If you're new here, consider subscribing and comment down below how you like these new lights in here because this is my new setup, baby. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.